Let's face it, we've all been there before. You're doing everything right, sticking to your macros, cutting carbs, and saying no to that tempting slice of cake. But the scale just won't budge. It's frustrating, right? You're putting in the work, so where are the results? Well, I'm here to tell you that you're not alone in this journey. In fact, many people experience this on keto, especially in the beginning. And the truth is, you might be unknowingly sabotaging your progress. There are a few common traps that keto beginners fall into, but the good news is, they're easily avoidable. In this video, we're diving deep into the five most common mistakes that could be stalling your keto results. All right, let's jump right into the first mistake, and it's a big one. You ready for this? You might not be eating enough fat on keto. I know, I know, it sounds counterintuitive. You're cutting carbs to lose fat, so why on earth would you eat more fat? Here's the deal. When you drastically reduce carbs on keto, your body needs another primary energy source. And guess what that is? Fat. Think of it like this. Fat is the fuel that keeps your keto engine running. Without enough of it, your body can't efficiently burn fat for energy, and you might even start feeling sluggish and weak. Now I'm not talking about loading up on just any kind of fat. We're talking about healthy, satiating fats that will not only keep you in ketosis but also provide you with sustained energy throughout the day. So what are some of these keto-friendly fat sources? Well, avocados are a fantastic choice. They're packed with healthy, monounsaturated fats, fiber, and essential nutrients. Then you've got your nuts and seeds, almonds, walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds. These are all excellent sources of healthy fats and can easily be incorporated into your keto diet. Don't forget about olive oil, coconut oil, and MCT oil. These are your secret weapons for boosting your fat intake and keeping those energy levels high. Remember, keto isn't about low fat, it's about high fat done right. Avoid this common mistake and you'll feel the difference fast. Let's move on to the second mistake that might be hindering your keto progress, eating too much protein. Now I know protein is essential, especially on a diet like keto, but there can be too much of a good thing, it's crucial to understand the balance. Here's why. When you consume more protein than your body needs, especially while on keto, it can actually kick you out of ketosis. This is a common pitfall many people face. Remember the goal of keto is to force your body to use fat as its primary fuel source. This metabolic state is what makes keto effective. But when you eat excessive protein, your body can convert some of that protein into glucose through a process called gluconeogenesis. This process can be counterproductive. And guess what? Glucose is the enemy of ketosis. It can derail your progress significantly. It's like trying to drive a car with the parking brake on. You're putting in the effort, but the results are not what you expect. You might be moving, but you're not going to get very far very fast. This can be frustrating and demotivating. So, how much protein is enough on keto? This is a critical question for anyone on this diet. Well, it varies depending on your individual needs and activity levels. But a good rule of thumb is to aim for about 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. Consulting with a nutritionist can also help. Now, to really drive this point home, let's do a quick visual comparison between a high-protein keto meal and a balanced keto meal. This will help you understand the difference better. On one hand, you have a plate with a large chicken breast, a small side of broccoli, and a drizzle of olive oil. This might seem healthy, but this meal is very high in protein but lacking in adequate fat. This imbalance can affect your ketosis. On the other hand, you have a plate with a smaller portion of salmon, a generous serving of roasted Brussels sprouts with bacon and Parmesan cheese, and a side of avocado. This is a more balanced approach. This meal provides a good balance of protein and fat, making it a much better choice for staying in ketosis. Balance is key to success on keto. Electrolyte imbalance, the silent keto killer. All right, moving on to mistake number three, and this one often gets overlooked, neglecting your electrolytes. See, when you're on a standard diet, your body gets a lot of its electrolytes from carbohydrates. But when you drastically reduce carbs on keto, your body starts producing less insulin. Now, insulin plays a role in regulating electrolyte balance in your body. So, when insulin levels drop, you start losing electrolytes like sodium, potassium, and magnesium at an increased rate, primarily through your urine. This electrolyte imbalance can lead to a whole host of unpleasant symptoms, often referred to as the keto flu. You might experience fatigue, muscle cramps, headaches, dizziness, and even brain fog. Not exactly the recipe for a successful keto journey, right? So how do you combat this? It's simple. Replenish those electrolytes. Make sure you're drinking plenty of water throughout the day and incorporate electrolyte-rich foods into your diet. 
Some great sources of electrolytes include bone broth, which is loaded with sodium and potassium, spinach and avocado, which are good sources of potassium and magnesium, and nuts and seeds, which provide a good mix of electrolytes. You can also supplement with electrolytes if you're struggling to meet your needs through diet alone. There are tons of great electrolyte supplements on the market specifically designed for keto dieters. Trust me, paying attention to your electrolytes can make all the difference in how you feel on keto. Have you ever experienced any of these symptoms on keto? The fiber factor. Don't forget this crucial nutrient. Let's talk about mistake number four, and this one's all about fiber. Now I know keto is all about cutting carbs, but that doesn't mean you should skimp on fiber. It's a common misconception that fiber isn't necessary on a low-carb diet, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Fiber is a type of carbohydrate that your body can't digest, but it plays a crucial role in your overall health, especially on keto. It's like the unsung hero of your diet. Here's why fiber is so important on keto. First and foremost, fiber helps keep things moving along your digestive tract. It acts like a broom, sweeping through your intestines. When you're eating a high-fat diet, it can sometimes slow down digestion, leading to constipation. This is where fiber steps in to save the day. Fiber adds bulk to your stool and helps prevent this uncomfortable side effect. It ensures that your digestive system runs smoothly, but it goes beyond just regularity. Fiber has multiple benefits that extend to various aspects of your health. Fiber also acts as a prebiotic, meaning it feeds the good bacteria in your gut. These beneficial bacteria are crucial for maintaining a healthy digestive system. A healthy gut microbiome is essential for optimal digestion, nutrient absorption, and even immune function. It's like having a well-oiled machine working inside you. Plus, fiber helps you feel fuller for longer, which can be a major win when you're trying to manage your weight on keto. It helps curb those pesky hunger pangs. So, where do you find fiber on keto? It might seem challenging, but it's actually quite simple. It's easier than you think. There are plenty of delicious and fiber-rich options available. Load up on leafy greens like spinach, kale, and lettuce. These greens are not only low in carbs but also high in fiber. Incorporate more avocados into your diet. They're a great source of fiber and healthy fats. Avocados are versatile and can be added to many dishes. And don't forget about chia seeds and flax seeds. These tiny seeds pack a big punch when it comes to fiber content. These little nutritional powerhouses are packed with fiber and can easily be added to smoothies, yogurt, or even just sprinkled on top of your salads. They're incredibly versatile. Did you know that a healthy gut, thanks to adequate fiber intake, can actually improve your body's ability to get into ketosis? It's true. A well-functioning gut can enhance your keto experience. So don't underestimate the power of fiber on your keto journey. It's a crucial nutrient that can make a significant difference in your overall health and well-being. The Long Game Keto for Sustainable Success All right, let's wrap things up with the fifth and final mistake that could be holding you back on keto, focusing solely on short-term results. Now, I get it, we all want to see those pounds melt away quickly, but it's important to remember that sustainable weight loss is a marathon, not a sprint. It requires patience, dedication, and a long-term vision. Many people start keto expecting drastic overnight results. They dive in with high hopes and expectations, and while some people do experience rapid weight loss in the beginning, it's often due to water weight and not necessarily fat loss. This initial drop can be misleading. When the scale inevitably slows down or plateaus, it can be incredibly discouraging, leading some people to throw in the towel altogether. This is a critical juncture in your journey. But here's the thing. Keto is about so much more than just weight loss. It's a holistic approach to health. It's about improving your metabolic health, balancing your blood sugar levels, increasing your energy, and feeling your absolute best. These are profound changes that take time. These benefits take time to develop and often extend far beyond the number on the scale. They are the true markers of success. So, instead of obsessing over short-term fluctuations in weight, shift your focus to how you feel. Are you sleeping better? Are you waking up refreshed? Do you have more energy throughout the day? Are you more productive and active? Are you noticing improvements in your digestion or mental clarity? These are significant indicators of progress. These are all signs that keto is working its magic, even if the scale isn't moving as quickly as you'd like. Remember, consistency is key. Stay committed. Stick with it. Trust the process, and you'll reap the long-term rewards of a well-formulated keto diet. The journey is worth it. Now, I want to hear from you. Your experiences can inspire others. Have you experienced any plateaus on your keto journey? How did you handle them? 
How did you overcome them? What strategies worked for you? Share your experiences in the comments below. Let's support each other on this journey. Together, we can achieve sustainable success. Keto success. Your journey starts now. So there you have it. The five common mistakes that could be sabotaging your keto success. Remember, it's not enough to just cut carbs. You need to fuel your body with the right types of fats, find your protein sweet spot, replenish those lost electrolytes, and don't forget about the power of fiber. Most importantly, remember that keto is a journey, not a race. There will be ups and downs, plateaus, and maybe even a few slip-ups along the way. But that's okay. Don't beat yourself up if you make a mistake. Just learn from it, get back on track, and keep moving forward. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more keto tips and tricks, and be sure to share this video with anyone you know who might be struggling on their keto journey. And, as always, I'm here to support you every step of the way. Now go out there and crush your keto goals.